What's up gamers? I'm your host Cobra and on today's episode of the free roll I'm showing you how to use Parallel Alpha's deck builder tool. Okay, so let's jump right in. And first things first, you need to navigate over to the tool. So if you're on parallel.life, which is the Parallel TCG homepage, you're gonna see a menu here in the top left, click on that, and then at the bottom is the build a deck tool. So we start off by clicking on new deck in the top right. And the first thing that you're gonna be presented with is a choice of which parallel you're gonna choose. And this is an important time to uh, review some of the basic requirements for a parallel deck. There's not a ton, uh, but they're important. Now, first, a parallel deck is made up of 40 cards. Those 40 cards come from your chosen parallel, which we're about to do, uh, as well as the universal parallel. The deck needs to be exactly 40 cards, and you're allowed to have up to three copies of each card with one exception. Some cards are designated as legendary, and uh, those can only have one copy uh, of each card per deck. Okay, so we've chosen Cathari because Cathari makes for a great starter deck. Now we need to choose our Paragon. Remember, your Paragon is a lot like the leader of your deck. Uh, they're going to be in play the entire game. Their passive will have a very large impact on the strategy that you use uh, in playing your deck and building it. So uh, this is an important choice, and you need to think about which one you want to go with. I recommend you start out with Naeus. That's because his abilities are very simple to use. In fact, you don't really need to think about him at all. You're gonna be able to take advantage of his passive ability just naturally. And that is that at the end of your turn, if a friendly unit dealt combat damage and survived, that unit gets plus one, plus one. Okay, so we have reviewed the basic requirements for building a parallel deck, and we've selected our parallel and paragon at this point. It's time to actually fill out the actual deck itself. Uh, so when you first load into the deck builder tool, um, it is going to show you any progress you've saved. These are some of the key cards that I want to highlight for Cathari later on. Uh, but it is going to show you all of the cards available from both Cathari and uh, Universal. Uh, if you've chosen a different parallel, then of course it'll be that parallel and Universal. Uh, and there is a lot. Um, so what you want to do is make use of the filter buttons. Uh, if you click on the filter button over here, it's going to bring up uh, a bunch of choices. And I like to start out by looking at the Cathari units first. Um, you'll be selecting whichever parallel you've chosen here. Uh, but these are going to make up the bulk of your cards. We're going to be looking for uh, about 20 to 30 units in total. Uh, but there's no magic number there. Uh, units are typically going to make up the majority of your deck. Uh, but you get to decide uh, whether that should be half of the deck, two thirds of the deck, three quarters of the deck, or more. Uh, but we're going to reduce it down to just the... Uh, units from our chosen parallel first, and you're looking for units that you want three copies of. So that's gonna be things like uh, Voice of Europa and the Cunning Scipient for this particular deck. Uh, but there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can go. Uh, Tabula Rasa is a really powerful card as well. Um, so you're gonna be choosing cards like that uh, and building out your deck. In fact, right now, let's go ahead and put three versions of each of the key cards that I have already selected in there. Next, you're going to head over to the universal units. So we switch our filter up, and now we are looking at universal units. Uh, you're going to want to uh, do one of two things here. Either you're going to fill some gaps, uh, like for example, uh, we don't have any defender units uh, in Cathari selected so far, so the Stoic Cell Sword might be good. Uh, the Vengeful Ally fits the theme of this deck quite nicely. It gets buffs when your units die. You're going to be loading the field with units, so naturally a bunch are going to die. Another thing worth considering here uh, is universal legendary cards. Now, if you want to get a lot of value for your purchasing power, uh, universal legendaries 
are great because they can be used in any deck at all. For example, one that I own is the Scanner Probe. Uh, this is a low cost unit, uh, it's battle ready, uh, and it allows you to look at the top card of your enemy's deck when you attack, uh, and you get the option to swap that out with a card in your hand. That can be very frustrating for your opponent, uh, and therefore a fun card to play. And since it's universal, it can go in any deck you like. Now, once we have chosen our units, uh, it is time to uh, switch up the focus, and I like to look at effects next. Uh, now, this is because effects are going to be the second largest group, typically. Uh, you might have more upgrades than effects if you're playing an Augen Core deck, but in most cases, uh, effects will be the second largest card type group in your deck. And again, we're gonna focus more on the uh, effects that go with our chosen parallel, in this case Cathari, uh, so that's going to be things like the genetic correction, for example. But this is another spot where you can uh, fill some gaps in your deck and address some potential weaknesses with universal uh, effects as well. Uh, something like Annihilate is one of my favorites. Uh, it's for energy and it allows you to destroy any unit or relic of your choice. That is uh, really, really useful in just about every deck, so you might want to add something like that here. Uh, with Cathari seeing triple is most likely the uh, most important effect card. Uh, this is a four energy effect, and it gives you three one one Galleon Iterants with Defender. Uh, those are gonna be clones, so they'll get the same buffs that your uh, units are getting, and that can be uh, quite troublesome for your opponent to deal with as well. Okay, so I have added some effects, and uh, that leaves us with upgrades and relics. You can see I'm already at 31 out of 40 cards uh, for this particular deck. Uh, that doesn't leave a ton of room for uh, relics and upgrades, but that's okay because uh, this tends to be the smallest group of cards uh, in the set. And uh, for most decks, or many decks, uh, especially within Cathari, you're gonna want uh, a card called Memento of the Fallen. This one's quite complicated, but essentially is an upgrade that you can continue to move around uh, instead of it getting wasted when uh, the upgraded unit is destroyed, and it keeps getting bigger. Uh, so again, that plays off of the theme of this particular deck. Something like Star Chart is gonna give you a bit more control uh, in terms of what you're drawing, the infused core can give you some additional energy. Uh, and there's just a whole bunch of interesting cards in here uh, that are gonna help separate your deck from uh, the others. You're gonna see a lot of the same uh, units and effects played in many different decks because uh, it's relatively easy to figure out which one of those are the most useful, but uh, the relics and upgrades, in my opinion, can make the biggest difference uh, between versions of a you know, similar type of deck. Uh, and so uh, these are worth considering. The Nucleotic syn Synthesizer is another uh, Cathari one that is quite interesting to play as well. And that wraps up my introduction to the deck building tool. Uh, now, we didn't build a full competitive deck here today. Uh, we just wanted to give you uh, an idea of how to go about building your first deck and some of the things that you want to think about. And the last piece of advice that I'm going to give you for deck building is that you've got to play with the deck. And today that's not possible, but very soon the uh, beta is going to be opening and we are all going to be playing parallel again. When that happens, take your new decks out there, uh, try them out against, you know, Marcolian decks, Shroud decks, Earthen decks, really everything that you can uh, and figure out where it does well, where it struggles, and then make some adjustments uh, so that you can be more successful. Uh, once you've had some time uh, refining your deck and you've gone through many different game scenarios, you're gonna have a much better grip on how to play the deck and what you need to be successful. I hope you found this fun and informative, and if you did, consider giving us a subscribe by clicking the button below. It only takes two seconds and really helps to support the channel.